Oh, oh, jeez. He has non-existent nipple piercings. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to... Oop, I hit the mic, I'm sorry. Welcome back to Friend Sim. I almost said Hive Swim. <laughs> okay, okay. Last time, we befriended a blue blood with a lot of piercings and a jade blood yandere. So let's find out what's next for us. Uh, of know-nothings and know-it-alls. She looks smug as heck. And I've seen this dude, I think. I I think I remember him from Troll Call, but he looks a bit different. In, le in a less chibi fashion. So let's take a look at volume 12. Uh, I'm hoping... Uh, there's only one of these, right? Yeah, one of each. Okay. Let's go. Scrolly, scrolly, scrolly. What? Volume 12. Ugh, oh, you have a headache. You and me both, man. I've had a headache for like three days. Is it dehydration? Only if you're thirsty for companionship. Are you hurt? Only your heart. And it aches for more pals. Is it withdrawal? Only from your addiction to new buddies. Really, there's only one cure for what ails you. Friendship. You wonder whose sweet medicine you'll be imbibing this time. Okay, let's... F okay, so we got uh, Gallic... Uh, Sigacy. Gallic Sigacy. Galaxy. <laughs> Gallic Sigacy and uh, this little mm, Oompa Loompa here with the weird shaped hair is Tarona Cassand. Well, you know how it goes. In order. It's a chilly night. Not in a bad way, though. It's kind of crisp air that invigorates you. You think you might just screw around and make a friend. You're busy breathing and a big old lungful of stuff when you hear someone call out from behind you. Excuse me, alien, I would like a word. It's phrased like a request, but delivered like a command. You don't recognize the voice, so you do some mental calculations as you turn. Whoever it seems, whoever it is seems like they know who you are, which could be good or really, really bad. It, you could make it to Zebra's a hive in a few blocks if you had to make a run for it. It's not exactly a place that you'd like to take sanctuary, though, so you figure the risk of talking to this mystery troll is worth it. By the time you've rotated around to face them, you got a big friendly grin on. Here we go. I know this one from somewhere, don't I? What is this Undertale music? <laughs> anyway. It's a bit of work to keep it there when you see who it is. Tall, sharp suit, well fit, filled out, curly hair, cute little Christmas tree looking horns, an expression that screams, would pay someone else to bisect you if you call anything about him cute. It's a good thing you didn't choose to run, because last time you saw this guy, he was sprinting away from your sparkly self at top speeds. Oh! Oh! You're the guy Tagaro was talking to, wasn't it? Okay, I'm gonna have to change your voice. I didn't know that you were so dashing. Okay, then. He strides towards you with, a, with considerably less fear, but... With about as much purpose. Paying it, f playing it friendly, you hold out your hand for to give him a shake. He takes it immediately, like it's an instinct. Okay, let's figure this out, business businessmen like. Okay, we can figure this out. Okay, let's think, 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 think. Kind of businessy, but I don't want a nasally voice. But I can't really do that many deep voices in a day. I don't have it in me. I I, I, I have to do small child voices, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Think, 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 think. Businessy. Kind of technological. Anyway. Okay. 
Yes, yes. I'm a Gallic Sigisi. You are an alien. Nice to meet you officially, etc., etc. It's imperative that we speak. As a matter of some importance, I hope you'll take my request seriously and follow me to my hive where we can talk more openly. He's got footnotes. It's best if you're in your best interest to comply. Wow, okay then. You got a wordy mother trucker over here, huh? Short and sweet. Hey, let's hang out. Would have worked on your friend thirsty stealth self, but that's fine. You don't have anything else to be doing, so why not follow this pushy high blood back to his house? Wonderful. This way. He stays true to his word and doesn't say anything else as he leads you towards his hive. Ow. But watch the way he clenches his but you watch the way he clenches his teeth and flicks his eyes back at you as he walks. He's about to explode, holding it all in. You walk a little slower, just to bask in the need emanating off him. <laughs> oh, a nice house. I like it. Kind of gothic. Hilltop, we got alien ivy going up. That's nice. I wonder if someone made this in The Sims yet. I could look for this on The Sims. Anyway... <laughs> Still dizzy from the feeling of having your presence wanted so badly, you trip a bit heading up a wide flight of stairs. There's a lot of them. Jeez, he could have warned you at least. You look up as you pull yourself to your feet. The stairs lead up to an old stone building covered with ivy that creeps around some pointy top towers up to the tops of turrets. It looks like kind of a place a crusty old professor might walk out of, followed by a flock of khaki-clad rich boys. The tour... The door opens with a creak. You do not hear anyone debating the difference between a movie and a film in here, but you do hear bleeding? Sounds reasonable. Does he have a sheep lucis? Goat lucis. Probably a goat lucis. Once inside, Gallic beckons you through the foyer into another room, this time unlatching what looks like a very tall metal baby gate to let you both in. You have a baby gate for your lucis, right? He checks the latch twice after he shuts it, and the gestures a pair of high studded back chairs on either side of a fire. Please take a seat. I'll make us some coffee. You will not have had any like this before, as the taste is drastically different from the slop you get at a public coffee shop. I like you have a lot of books. And you got a typewriter? You very well read. Do you write? Can I be your maid sprit? <laughs> I like this guy. I want to know more about him before I make any assumptions of Husbando because this guy's hitting Husbando. He's he's getting dangerously close to it. Okay. You do take a seat and you look around while he screws with an antique ex antique espresso machine. He has a dark he has a desk covered in papers, open books and a typewriter along with the walls that are bookshelves leading up to a vaulted ceiling. Ooh, right. I love vaulted ceilings, too. Everything has an air of purposeful messiness to it. Like he pulled some of his cooler titles to leave lying around for you to see. How flattering. You mentioned this that this must be one of those personal jerk-off book hives that Tizius was talking about. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, never mind. You clear your throat and ask him what he wanted to talk about. He hands you a cup and sits down on the other chair. Oh no! So much text! Oh my gosh! Okay, that's one thing I don't really like. Okay. Of course, I wanted to clear up a misunderstanding between us. You may be under false impressions that I am uninformed uh, of the attributes of rainbow drinkers. You may think that you are successfully fooled me into thinking you were one yourself when we first met. I had just not previously encountered one in real life, nor had ever seen an alien for that matter. Furthermore, I saw you before. You were in the company of Tagora Gorjak. I was making the most reasonable assumption possible given the information I had available. It makes complete sense if you think about it. He looks at you expectantly. Oh, uh, you guess it's your turn to say something. Is that a all? LMO, I don't give a crap, my dude. Okay, what to say? Uh, I'll go with this really laid back one. I'm sure I'm gonna get on his nerves. Oh, that kind of stopped him in his tracks. You laughed and you realize he's 100% serious. He really cares a bit that much of what you think of him. It reminds you a bit of how you were a few months ago. 
or, you know, a few days ago. Still, you know what it's like. You try to tread the line between humoring him and easing him into giving a... Easing him out of having to care that much. You tell him that you'd like him even if he was a complete rube, a total rainbow drink lore idiot, if his incompetence knew no bounds. I get it. Oh heck, if the barely contained panic in his eyes is any indication, he isn't at all placated by that. You cut him off. You cut off that line of friend finag fina finagling, and try something that you hope is a little more his speed. It must be cool to have a primary source sitting in his own jerk-off book hive, though, right? He exhales, gathering himself a little. I'm not sure why you keep calling it that. Though I do admit I am interested in the chance to learn more about you. His fingers twitch. You hope he doesn't mean in, like, a creepy dissection kind of way. You're free to leave, right? You glance anxiously at the locked baby gate. What? Of course you can leave. Just because I'm a high blood does not mean I'm a sadist. My interest in you is purely academic and friendly. Furthermore, the gate is not for you. You do definitely worry about that, but not in a present actionable way. You j Just in a sort of under-the-surface self-preservation way you've worried about, you know, everything that's tried to end your run here on Alternia so far. Plus, he offered you friendship. You'll reach out a heart to that monkey trap any day. Hell yeah, then. You throw your arms out, toss your head, and tell him that you're ready to be studied and subsequently friended. Gallic doesn't pounce right on that, though. Mostly he looks uncomfortable, which doesn't stop him from talking. I do have considerable interest in understanding the pathos of the alien. What I really want to know is what makes you so magnetic. All observable criteria points to you not being much to look at, but there seems to be something about you that draws people in. It's the circles, my dude. I know character design. How I almost hurt myself again with the headphones. Okay. But yeah, dude. It's just, I'm such a simple shape. I have a childish appeal. I don't have any muscles that would be threatening except for my legs. Have you seen them? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's cool, dude. It's almost as if I have time powers that also reverse time and let me befriend everyone even if I make terrible, terrible mistakes. That isn't even on the top ten list of insults you've heard since landing, so brush it off. So you brush it off just fine. Plus you have it on good authority that your legs are nice. <laughs> you flex those bad girls in order to give yourself a little self-esteem boost. Okay. Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay. I was wondering if you had an emissarial status, but the more I learn about you, the more difficult it becomes to make any sense of your plans. Accounts of your activities contradict each other at almost every turn. You're either the most suave and well-connected plenipotentiary I have ever heard of, or you're running around with no clue of what you're doing and somehow it works for you anyway. You mean it's worked before? A low, frustrated clicking rumbles in his throat. He puts his coffee aside and crosses his legs. This is the sort of thing I'm talking about. I know all about your antics, leg-based and otherwise. I just cannot work out what the draw is. Why do people like this? <sighs> I really love that. I love this guy <laughs> so much. He's hitting husbando. Yes. Okay. He seems pretty fixated on this. You wonder if perhaps he has some hidden reason for wanting to know why other trolls might be into your freaky little self. Some sort of personal interest in other trolls' friendship decisions and inclinations and interests. You know, just, you know, maybe. You wait for him to blush, but he doesn't. He does start talking very quickly, though. Here we go. First of all, I do not know what you mean by that. I do not base my self-worth on anything, anything so external. Hypothetically, if I did happen to be invested in what someone else thought of me, I would not tell you about it. Furthermore, just because I'm not a freak does not mean I have any de do not have desirable traits. Oh, yep, he has a goat lucis. Hello, goat lucis. You have different. You have a different kind of horned. Similar but different. Look at this friendly little ba beast. Anyway. You think he's starting to keep going forever, but now that he's just started to get it all out, but there's some sound behind you that shuts him the hell up. You both turn to see as Lucis, a big scruffy goat, gently headbutting the baby gate. It looks extremely friendable. <laughs> Stay on topic or feed the beast! <laughs> oh gosh, I can't hardly see. The white on white is so difficult. 
Uh, oh, let's feed the beast. As much fun as it is to get monologued at, you opt for a change of pace and ask Gallic if this goat is a good boy. <laughs> if you call breaking into my book hive and eating important chapters of my manuscript good, then yes, he's the best. Oh, you got a manuscript? Swish. Let me read it. He sighs when he says it, a mix of frustrated and fond. You pull an apple adjacent fruit from your hoodie pouch. You never know what you might have to spend the day hiding in an alley, so pocket snacks that don't make you puke are extremely useful. Pocket snacks. You offer it to the Lucis, and he uses his teeth and tongue to pull it to him through a hole in the gate. Nice. You don't have a crisis about whether or not you should let him into the room, because once he swallowed his snack, he trots back down the hallway. You mosey over to Gallic. Plop back down in the chair and let him know you're ready to get this fact exchange party started. You wonder to yourself what kind of information actually exists about aliens. You mean humans on Alternia. The fact that you have started thinking of yourself as the alien is mostly fine, you figure. It's what the trolls vibe with, which is what you're all about. But in the end, it could be cool maybe to hear about the history of humankind from their perspective. Hold on. I just remembered... I forgot last time we actually made it through uh, the Jade Blood storyline. I already can't remember her name. We made it through her storyline without screwing up. So. Sorry. Okay. It's what the trolls vibe with, which is what you're all about in the end. But it could be cool maybe to hear about the history of humankind from their perspective. You've been curious, and if anyone would know, it'd be this nerd. So you ask. There's absolutely nothing. I've read all kinds of reports about other alien races, of course. I can pull those for you if you would like. As for your species, I can confidently say that there is no record his recorded history of your kind on Alternia. Oh. Wow. So you're the first of your kind to visit, huh? You flex again and brag that maybe your secret is why everyone is so hot for your friendship. That even Gallic can tell that you're not really feeling it. If you say so, are you some kind of high blood equivalent back home? Is that why you are so friendable here? What is your planet's system of government and where do you fit in? What is your main off-world exports? What is the defining moments in your species development? Have you formed any bonds here that you would say fit your planet's equivalent of the quadrant system? Oh, wow. I love this nerd. Husbando, we have found him. You're not ready to... Take a pace. <laughs> you're not ready to take a space, SAT. You're too busy trying to sort out the idea that you're the literal only option for him to learn any of this stuff. You're the only one of your kind around. You feel like the frame surrounding your life has shifted, like everything around you zoomed into the widest angle, with you a tiny speck in the corner, invisible to the naked eye. Whew, maybe you should sit down. Ah, oh, screw it. You are already sitting down. Maybe you should lie down. You crawl on the floor, which Gallic probably won't like, but you're too busy having an existential crisis to care. Dang it, that's a lie too. You definitely still care what he thinks of you. It isn't the first time you felt overwhelmed by your situation since you've landed. It isn't even the hundredth, honestly. It's just that you kind of always had a back pocket assumption that there was some way out of this. Sure, you're having fun making friends and allies, assembling a new wardrobe, picking up weird survival skills. It just hadn't quite hit you that this might be all that was left for you. For real. Is this floor wriggling another alien friendship ritual I just do not grasp the allure of, or are you spontaneously suffering? Please stop whatever this is. You want to answer him, but your words feel so far away at this moment. You try to call him... You try to call up how, you're cr how you crashed, or what your butt was doing in a spaceship to begin with. Are you even a certified astronaut? Do you have an advanced degree? Do you e even have hands? <laughs> your vision blurs and you feel queasy. You need air. A lot of it. You run towards the closest available source. A wide window. You demonstratingly you're s Okay. Demonstrating yourself is maybe not the best option, but it's the only one you're currently in the most emotionally attuned to. So that is what you do. Luckily, the panes of the window open like French doors, and you're still on the first floor. 
You spill out without grabbing any glass or l breaking any glass or limbs. Behind you, Gallic hollers. It still feels nice outside. You lay there and breathe in and out and try to pull your stuff together. From your phone, your prone position, you see Gallic put one leg over the windowsill, shake his head, pull it back, and turn away. He certainly looks fit enough to be able to manage that leap, but of course he wouldn't bother. He should give up on his hot mess of an alien self. You're fine wasting away out here like yesterday's banana peels anyway. You're ready to take a depression nap right then and there when you hear the front door open. Gallic is stomping towards you, flushed and fuming. He looms over you, his large frame quaking with anger. Listen here, you little shoot maggot. I open my home to you. I have opened my mind to the possibility of understanding you, despite multiple instances of you not offering me the same courtesy. I only want to correct your misconceptions about me and have a chance to exchange some cultural understanding. No! You sit up and promise that he's been great. The best and smartest friend you've made yet. A great host, excellent even. He's wearing a suit. Oh, please. At least he's not wearing a bow tie, and the suit isn't white and green. Because if it was white and green, and his head was a round orb, I'd be terrified. Not your fault you're not clicking like you do with other people. If that were true, why would you spend this entire visit acting like a fresh-hatched idiot? At this point, I have to conclude that you are mocking me and my genuine interest in you. There is no explanation for your behavior. You try to explain that you're just in your feelings, but he has stopped humoring you. He turns on his heel and stomps back inside. You want to hope that he'll come back. The drive to understand outweighing the drive to be done with your sorry butt, but you know he won't. You drag yourself to your feet and start the slow, lonely walk to somewhere, anywhere, else. From the open window, his Lucis cocks his head and from side to side bleats his goodbyes. Well, that was bad. <laughs> Look at him, he's just like, I don't understand you. Okay. And that's the end of that streak. <laughs> anyway, I guess we're supposed to ignore the goat in the room. Stay on topic. Please ignore him. He just wants to get in here and cause problems. You think hard to yourself about this. You really want to get- You really want to go pet this big goat, Dad. But you want to dish into this guy's love of life even more. You've heard some of his situation from the other side, of course. But you really shouldn't let Gallic know that Tagora call tells you about their tentative and awkward pitchish flirtation. Unless, you know, it helps you get more friends. No, you slap your own cheek to snap yourself out of it. No secret spilling. Gallic leans away from you against the back of his chair. Ugh, you're really not doing anything to change my impression of you. You have an idea, so you cut him off before he can monologue you to death. You tell him that it sounds to you like what's really bothering him, a regular non-freaky guy, is that he's jealous of your free-spirited friendability. He wants what you've got. He glares at you, his breath quickening. Ooh, yeah, that hit a nerve. I do not want anything of yours. Interrupting him has worked pretty well so far, so you try it again. Let's cut the crap, you say. There's no reason for him to hide anything from you. First of all, you already promised to like him no matter what. Secondly, you know what it's like to want to impress someone. And finally, you know all about how to be a huge weirdo. So, why doesn't he let you show him how to walk on the wild side? He can take a few pointers from Alternia's biggest freak. You can see the ensuing makeover montage already, and you start bouncing a bit in your seat. I have zero interest in... Okay, that won't do it. You try one more tactic, telling him you guess he doesn't mind not knowing anything about how to be a bee. Okay, you tell him that you guess he doesn't mind not knowing anything about how to be a freak. Old Gallic, they'll all say, smart about how to be boring, and a real idiot about weird stuff. Uh... I see what you're doing. It stands to reason that allowing you to broaden my horizons with your alien ways will only serve to increase my cultural competence. Great! So what it'll be? Shopping for a, a more casual suit? Or something wilder? Spicy undergarments? Dyeing your hair? Other wilder body mods? Gallic eyes, eyebrows shoot up. The last one sounds interesting. Wow. He's really wanting to go full, eh? <laughs> He's already ready to go full into it, huh? You weren't expecting that from this guy. But you guess maybe he's wanting for an excuse to try something. That or he really can't deal with not being Alternia's biggest obnoxious know-it-all. 
Go big or get cold, as they say. Dang, that probably is what they say. Anyway, you can't wait to get this show on the road. You tell him you even know a guy that can probably help him out. <laughs> we are already visiting him again. Old Malik. Will he be discreet? I am willing to leap into this, but I do need to protect my privacy, of course. Oh, for sure. You mean, like, probably. His brow froze. Either your continued interruption or your hesitance. So you waste no more time and whip out your palm husk. You pull up the secret gripe profile you got Malik to make sure that you'll keep in touch and call him up. What's up, bro, buddy? Snake bites. Oh my gosh. He's got an egg thingy as his avatar? Okay. You get right to it and tell him that you made a new friend who's looking into getting a new hole in him. Besides you, you hear Gallic choke on his coffee. Artistically. An aesthetic hole. Gallic shrugs weakly, his eyes still wide. Or, or something similar. Hell yeah. Anything for you, bud. Malik's eyes dart from your face to the room behind you. You're not sure how he can see through the screen, though. My gear. Easy to pack. So I'll be over soon. I'll bring options. You start giving him directions, but he stops you. Don't worry, I know exactly where you are. <laughs> your palm husk? Low jacked. Figured you'd be cool with that. See you soon. So he, he hacked my palm husk. I guess that's what friends are for. Malik hangs up, and you grin at Gallic to reassure him that this seems like a manageable situation. He offers you more coffee, which you take, because you are a polite guest. Gallic starts ideating in a small leather-bound notebook, so you mostly watch. Listen to him explain the brainstorming process, take sips, and wish the goat would come back. Eventually, you hear soft footsteps approaching. Here we go. Gallic jumps when Malik opens the baby gate. How did you get into the front door? I hacked it. Galak's mouth opens and shuts a few times. His eyes dart between you and Malik's matching hoodies. Oh, thank you. I, where's the cat? I, I did get to keep the hoodie. Just kidding. <laughs> Your operation? Pretty low tech for an indigo, unfortunately. Your Lucis let me in. Anyway, I'm Malik. And from behind him, a proud bleeding. Hell yes! <laughs> Gallic looks around and wing wrings his hands. There's a lot going on all of a sudden. He points to you. You, alien, hold on to my Lucis. He cannot be unsupervised in here, or he'll eat everything. And as for you, Malik, hello. My name is Gallic Sigishi. Welcome to my hive. That is a problem. I hear you want to get freaky. Gallic tugs at the bottom of his suit jacket, straightening it reflexively. Poor dude. You want to tell him you're proud of him for going so far to go out of his depth, but he seems to be holding his own here. Plus, the goat really wants to make a snack out of some old paperbacks. You take your job seriously and hold tight to his neck. Uh, yes, that is correct. I hear you have the tools to help me achieve this. I am open to a wide range of modifications. My notebook has some sketches. You want to dutifully look and not touch, too, but wrangling a big goat is a full-time job. Malik holds up the notebook for you both to see. Wow. Galek it's not a bad artist, actually. Still, you have to kind of turn your head and squint to make out what's going on in a couple of the sketches. You guess there's a few surprises left for you in this brave new world of troll anatomy, huh? You point out to the sketch that looks the best with your hand as you scramble to keep a hold of the fistful of wiggly loosest fur with the other. Yeah. I can work with that. Hell yeah, button up some layers off. More! Gallic flicks his eyes to you and you give him a big of supportive thumbs up. He took you look politely away when he starts taking off his jacket. Instead you focus on your job and oh, you have some pocket snacks. You pull out some mostly not bruised fruit and offer it to Gallic's Lucis. He chomps it up readily and calms down a bit. Jeez, can't Gallic afford food for this guy? He eats plenty. Gallic doesn't take off his undershirt, but he does roll up the bottom before leaning his forearms against the back of some of his chairs, exposing the broad palate of his hips and back. That design does capture an 
an effable facet of my core self. Get going on it. I assume I do not need to spell out any potential consequences if you stray from the artistic vision, correct? Malik rolls his eyes and pulls out a tattoo gun. It looks mostly how they do on Earth, but with a strip of greenish, almost biological light. Don't worry about your blood color. Don't worry your blood color is crystal clear. Gallic winces at the first press the gun to his skin. Maybe it's the lasers. There's a glow happening back there. With the loosest sate... With the Lucius sated, you are free to see what's going on, so you climb into the chair of Galax, leanings against the back of, and lean over to peek over to watch. What's, so what's the deal with this anyway? Tattoos don't seem much like your vibe. There is no specific reason. I am simply fleshing out my worldly experiences, attaining visceral knowledge of a new kind. He's checking off something from his bucket list, you helpfully add. Gallic flushes bright blue and jerks backwards, screeching- Oh, we said bucket! Ah! Screw my life! Okay! <laughs> Gallic flushes bright blue and jerks backwards, screeching like you haven't heard since you met and traumatized him. Oh boy! You have no idea how, but this is apparently extremely the wrong thing to say. Watch it. You're gonna make me screw up your ineffable vision. No need to flip your think pan. You gotta do what it takes to find a bucket, buddy. I've been there. Gallic stares decidedly into the middle distance as he breathes in and out and re repositions himself against the chair. That is extremely not what this is about. I'm perfectly capable of fulfilling my propagational duties. This is not a thing I have to do. It's the thing I want to do. If it happens to be a spark of concubine interest, so be it. Yeah, whatever. I don't judge. <laughs> You don't only have the barest grasp of what they're discussing here, but things are starting to click into place. You don't want to embarrass your potential new friend by calling him out on his crush even further, or by implying he won't find anyone to fill a quadrant with. You tell Malik that Gallic is making his decisions based on his own personal emotional self-educated journey. That's all. Yeah, that's the heart of it exactly. Gallic smiles at you and he's crooked and stiff on his face like he hadn't expected you to put it off there. But you smile back and place your hand on top of his, a white knuckled against the back of his chair. He winces in pain only once more before Malik steps back, tilting his head to admire his handiwork. That'll do it. Gallic rolls his shoulders and twists his body, extend to check his new ink. Satisfied, he turns to extend his hand to Malik. Thank you for your time on such short notice. Would you like to stay to... Malik shakes his head and cuts him off there. No thanks. I'm not much for the after party. See you around, Robo Bud. Nice to tat you. <laughs> nice to tat you, button up. He tosses the gear back in his bag and nods at you both. On his way out, he pats the goat's head, now placid. One new friend is enough for one day, I suppose. Thank you for encouraging me to try something new. I still do not completely understand you, but your penchant. But your penchant for flinging yourself wholeheartedly into precarious situations is fascinating. Is that what you, that's what you do best? You grin uncontrollably at the compliment. I might try employing that tactic a bit more in my daily life, if it will lead to newer, deeper gasps, grasps of the troll condition. As such, I have two confessions for you. He takes one deep breath and gets the rest out in one go. One. I knew only an elementary amount of information about rainbow drinkers before I met you, and two, the reason for my frond hinge jerk reaction at that time was because of my gorgex shaped blind spot. Oh, he does. Okay. You graciously do not let on that those are two of the most obviously obvious pieces of information you've ever encountered. Gallic clears his throat and thrusts his palm husks towards you. Now that we have taken care of that, take a photo. He turns around and you lovingly set up the shot. On his hip bone is the modest indentation of his sign, in indigo of course. It's framed by two springs of pine, crossed under it in a V. The look on his face as he turns back over his shoulder for the camera is the most self-satisfied thing you've ever seen. When you hand Gellick his palm husk back, he f messes with it for a minute and then starts buzzing with notification then starts buzzing with notification after notification. He looks up at you, a smile creeping into the corner of his mouth. He bites it back like he's not sure what to do with this unidentifiable happiness he's experiencing. Aww, my boy. 
He hates it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Victory. Look at the nerd with his feet propped up like that, just staring at his phone. <laughs> yeah. That's cute. That's cute. I think we found Husbando. Anyway, we only got one more left for this. Okay. Okay. It's cool. It's cool. Back into the fray again. Do, 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 do. Two, chapter 12. So, apparently she's an idiot. Again with the headache. Still do have that headache. Maybe I should drink more water. Okay. Tarona Kazand. Tarona Kazand. Hey, yeah. Okay. Why are we in the mid- What is- are we back at our hideout? What? I just read that second sentence before the first. Oh, gosh. <sighs> okay. So here you are. In jail. You always knew you'd end up here in here eventually. But you were not- But you were expecting a human jail. Not this. <laughs> Are we going to try to escape? <laughs> Will there be a pumpkin for us? What pumpkin? This pumpkin. Okay. It all happened so fast. You were waltzing down another Alternian street in search of friends when you heard the telltale story of a machinery behind you. And before you could escape, some giant metal drone with a rocket butt scooped you up and flew away with you. You were honestly surprised that the drone didn't execute you on sight. They've tried to do that before, after all. Perhaps your numerous shenanigans have grown so vast and ridiculous someone wants to see you in person before you die. If only you had the chance to ask you what the hell. If, in any case, you aren't complaining. Not about being brought in alive, at least. You have plenty of other things to complain about, though. The cell sucks. It's hard and cold and full of this gross-looking moss that could probably kill you since everything else on this planet sure can. Now, if anything, Deltarune has taught us that we can totally eat moss. Anyway, there's a couple of patchwork holes in the back wall of your cell, which aren't enough to wriggle your way out through, but there are enough to let in light from outside. You've been here since a few hours before dawn, and now it's midday, which means scorching rays of sunlight are streaming their way into your cell and forcing you to dart around the shadiest spots in the sun as, no, as the sun makes its way across the sky. As if it weren't enough, it's also hammering rain outside, which really isn't doing much of the s to stymie the sunlight. And you think the rain might be acidic too? Fun. Intermingled with the rain, you've been hearing some sounds coming from the other rooms. Interrogations, maybe? Torture? Whatever it is, you're not a fan. And would somebody please fix the leak in the roof? If you were to listen to one more drop of water exploding into the floor like a nuclear bomb, your crap is going to take an extended sabbatical from the handle. To conclude, it's not great. You'd like out. Right now, preferably. Now? Ah, oh, dang it. You were hoping that someone would have conveniently appear in time with your internal monologue. But no such luck. Two seconds. Putting on a sweater. It's a little chilly. My fingers are cold, and so are my arms. And oh, oh, okay. Whew. There she is. I've heard this one before too, haven't I? Where have I heard this one before? Anyway. Okay, whoo, there she is. Your new savior, a small, probably the smallest troll you've met so far, with the possible exception of Amesia, and she looks about as young as Amesia as well. She's got wild pigtails sprouting from her head and a twitchy look in her eye, like she's going to start sprinting the second she hears a sound. She opens your cell door with a creak and gestures from the hallway with a quick jerk of her head. Okay, let's see. 
smallish voice. Maybe I can go back to the Amnesia voice for a little bit, but not the Amnesia voice completely. Okay. Come on! With me now. Quickly, head down. Keep quiet. No asking questions. Ask questions or follow her? I'm gonna follow her. This doesn't seem like the place to ask questions. You follow her down the hallway, keeping quiet as instructed, even though you have many questions you want to ask her. Questions like what her name is, where you are, why they haven't fixed that freaking leak in the roof. Instead, you just hurry closely behind as she takes you up a stairwell in the back of the building and up multiple flights of stairs. Peeking out the window of each door you pass, you see what seems to be an evidence locker, and then a row of tightly packed cubicles, and then a long winding hallway. This is where she opens the door and ushers you through. The hallway is full of electronically locked doors with troll signs on them. The overwhelming majority of them are teal. The only other presence here seems to be automated cleaning robots. You are unsurprised to see that tall ro ro that you, you are unsurprised to see that troll Roombas come with their knives pre-attached. She punches a series of numbers and letters into a keypad beside the doors, bearing her sign and name, and then slips inside, and you follow. Whew! <laughs> Here we are! My hive away from hive. You can be a bit louder now, but no shouting! That'd be weird as hell, buddy. Oh, and my name is Trona, by the way. You politely refrain from shouting as you introduce yourself to her. I just noticed that all the teal bloods have names that start with T. Is that intentional? It can't be intentional. It's probably just an accident because I think, yeah, not every single teal blood starts with a T, right? Nah, shouldn't. Nope. You politely refrain from shouting as you introduce yourself to her. Tarona pulls up a chair and sits down on her husk top, tapping some keys. So that's what we're gonna do. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and access your file on our in our system. Shouldn't be too hard since you're a weird alien and yep, here we go. That's what we're looking for. Time to make a few edits. She leans in, fingers flying quickly over the keys. She's absurdly fast on the keyboard, her eyes darting back and forth across the screen. Now, normally, I wouldn't pull anything this risky, and I certainly wouldn't be helping out a criminal. But I have it on good source that you're not the kind of person we should be letting rot in a cell. Or worse. Right now, you're in our system on a lot of weird and serious offenses. But you and I... We know that the only thing you're really guilty of is trying to keep your head and shoulders attached, yeah? Just gonna click here, delete a few things, and... Here we go! You're clean! Wow, just like that, huh? You thank her profusely and even begin to consider groveling at her feet, but she cuts you off. Listen, I'm just doing the grunt work for you. Was it really my decision to spring you? Let's just say you and I have a mutual friend. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Which one? Is it... I don't... Is it Tagora? No, I don't think it's Tagora. I think I know who it is. It, it's, uh... Teresia. Teresius, right? Teresius. I'm... Oh, no! Tagora! Is it Tagora? How many tail bloods do we know? Okay. I run errands for him sometimes in exchange for information, and I just happen to be pulling a day over here anyway, so I was in the right place at the right time. This mutual friends of yours sounds like a- oh no, it's still Malik. Really? Okay, cool, cool. Malik's cool. Man, Malik is really being a dude bro here, man. He's shown up in like almost every story so far since he appeared. Awesome. I like this dude. He's not husbando. But I like him. He, he's one of the best boys. I just noticed how the windows in here, they're circular. Like at the top, they got the arches. And it looks like that the... the <laughs> oh gosh, the little slats of the shades there also are... How are they hanging there? And they seem to be cut specifically for this type of window. What an odd thing. Anyway. Sorry, I'm noticing background stuff, like the legit, that obvious, uh, terrible 
the great and terrible judge monster that they have. Anyway. This mutual friend of yours sounds like a dead ringer from Malak. Wow, knowing a cerulean in high places is really paying some dividends. It beats our data, at least. All you got from her was some weird DMs on Chitter from her stream followers. <laughs> anyway, speaking of being at the right place, what is this place anyway? You couldn't connect the dots here? It's like the police station for teals. For legislative. This place is... Well, it's a lot of things. Jail, and a courthouse, and an office, and a whole lot more. Basically, you're a, a teal... Let's see. Basically, if you're a teal looking for how to learn how to do teal things, this is where you go for hands-on internmanship. Most of it's law-related, of course, but there's a couple of semi-related fields for the go- for the go-getters looking for something a bit different. Like me! Yep, I beat your- I bet you're just dying to know what I get up to in these hollowed halls, don't you? I'm getting thrown off by her quirk. I'm sorry. I keep- it's like- Ah, uh, okay. I get it. It's cute. But I'm- 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 I'm struggling to read it. I'm sorry. Surely a brilliant mind like Miss Kazund is go is doing some real important work here. It's what I bet you're thinking, and you're absolutely correct, my friend. Feast your grander bulbs on this. Major luck. Anyway. A few clicks of the wriggly, bulbous mouse and her husk top loads several images. You glance at the screen, and the recognition center in your brain goes haywire with dopamine. Alien culture or not... You know memes when you see them. Oh, you missed memes. <laughs> yes, meme girl. Check it out. Check it out. They are a little corny, but I know Triz is gonna love them. She is a real sucker for this kind of thing. One of them is an image of Mac of image macro featuring Triza doing her makeup with the caption, Triz is so hot, rebels are not. <laughs> Another seems to feature troll brains, at least you hope these are brains, of varying sizes and hemocolors. Being a rebel is the small, maroon brain, and sympathizing with rebels is the medium-sized olive brain, and worshipping Trizza is a giant purple brain. These... Oh no. Okay, these ones will be going up on the web soon, but for now I've got plenty of other memes circulating. See, I made a bunch of fake chitter accounts and got some teachy troll to automate them for me. He was hyped as the ex he was hyped out the excitement enough to do some work on Triz's behalf. I tell you, some of these accounts just pretend to be regular trolls, and others are best jokes nightly, big funny, relatable laugh humor. You know, they're racking up the follows as we speak. And the point of them is to put these Trizza memes out there. That's how we get them! You start with a couple of innocuous jokes and cut the per beast pics. And cute per piece pics. And then BAM! Suddenly you're spreading the good word of the Empire and everyone accepts it because your Chitter account is funny and hip. Oof. Propaganda. That's called... Let's call it meme-proganda. Meme-aganda. It's gonna be the next big thing, I next big thing, I tell ya. I mean, it already technically is on the internet right now. <laughs> it does seem like pretty clever way to spreading propaganda, really effective on today's modern youth. It's also deeply unnerves you, but you leave that part out. There's nothing. There's just something wrong about memes being used for evil. Thank you, thank you. Glad someone appreciates all the hard work I'm doing here instead of just brushing me off. I've had to do a lot of overtime putting out propaganda for the Empire lately. But just between you and me. Although this ain't exactly much of a secret anymore. There's talk of a rebellion brawl brewing like a real, actual, big-scale one. Instead of just a bunch of highbloods getting paranoid because Burgundy looked at them funny. It's pretty scary, actually. I hope I won't get swept up in all of it something if something nasty breaks out. Yeah, that's the vibe you're getting. You're about to ask for more info about this rebellion when she cuts you off and keeps rambling on. Seems like she's got a lot to say. 
You get the impression that nobody else here listens to her, possibly because she's still so young compared to most of them. But saving you from a jail cell is a good way to get you to pay attention. But here's the thing, despite being a whole lot of potential trouble, it's also a great opportunity to show the Empire just how invaluable my skill set will be for them. See? I've got it all planned out. First, I need to prove to Treza how useful and clever I am and how helpful I can be for her regime. Then, when Treza comes of age, she'll dethrone the current Empress and take her place. Most trolls just love Treza, and those who don't are gonna get themselves called real quick. So I'm sure I'll have plenty of support when the time comes for their duel. Once she's in full power, I snag myself a nice position as her propaganda minister. And if I'm real lucky, I can wheel my way into being assistant to his horrible tyranny himself. His honorable tyranny? You don't think you've heard of this guy before. You assume he's a particularly high-ranking troll in the legislative process. He's not a troll. I don't know what he is. He's kind of like what the drones are, but I don't think he's a robot, which is why I thought the drones weren't robots. Anyway. Oh, uh-huh, no. He's a huge screw-off monster who passes judgment on criminals by beating them. No, by eating them. Or eating anyone who bugs him, really. He presides over, per uh, over particularly noteworthy trials, especially at the extreme court. In retrospect, you should have known. If monsters can't be parents, they can surely be judges, too. But uh, what exactly is the appeal here? Who wouldn't want to be big, handsome, and strong enough to devour anyone who annoys you? It's the perfect life, I tell ya. Fair. As it stands, since I can't be him, I can at least be his best buddy and most perfect little helper. And besides, I'm doing all the... All the behind-the-scenes work is a lot safer than trying to actually hunt down or prosecute criminals, I'll tell you that much. I mean, yeah, he might be... He might eat me, but that's just normal workplace safety hazard, really. Nothing can't... Nothing I can't handle. She really does have it planned out, doesn't she? You're impressed. Thank you. But I can't do it all, all alone. I'm gonna need some help along the way from every talented and clever associate from a very talented and clever associate or two. I bet you know who I'm talking about. Her Lucis? Her classmates? No, dummy. Sheesh. Here, I'm trying to butter you up and it flies right over your think pan. I'm talking about you. I need your help. And I think after bailing you out of the jam, I've earned it, wouldn't you say? Uh, the old I rake my claws down your back, you rake yours down mine deal, you know? Old troll idioms are still as inscrutable as ever, but you do know a thing about claws and about helping people to return their good graces. What's she need? <laughs> you ever hear of an old adage, Teal's talk? Well, a lot of Teal's have been talking about the strange alien going around getting all buddy-buddy with the cast. <laughs> The way I see it, someone like that might just know how to get me into their offices and dig up some dirt on them and their potential rebel connections. You're not telling me to... No, I'm not selling out... No! I love Teresia's. She is so fun. She's like such a grump and I love her and she's tired. Why? I keep saying that they should start shell shelling out for grand scran tech, but nobody ever listens to me. No way, no how. A regular old password system ought to be enough, right? <laughs> they wish. They really wish those locks were as secure as they think they are. You can figure out the codes, no problem, I'm sure. What do you say, pal? How's about you help me help the Empire and root out rebel scum? Oof, you're not particularly keen on betraying your friends, but you do owe Tirona a favor now, and you'd love to make another pal while you're at it. There's got to be some way you can maneuver your way out of this mess. You tell her, sure, you'll offer her some help. If you're going to hit up someone's office, it should be... Tigirit. 
Tagora, Tizius, or Tagiri. That's right, Tagiri is a teal. <laughs> well, uh, I know Tizius is the one that has the rebel connections, uh, and it'd be an insult if we said Tagiri was doing something illegal. Uh, Tagora is trying to set me up as a like a uh, like a rainbow drinker. But I, I definitely don't want to throw Tizius under the bus. I know Tizius is the obvious choice, but I don't want to throw Tizius under the whole thing. So I'll just throw Tagiri under the bus. Anime nerd, go. After mulling it over for a while, you're sure Tagiri is the safest choice. Sure, he's the guy with the sword, but he's also by far the least likely to harbor rebel sympathies. So you won't be getting anyone in trouble here. Yeah, yeah, Tagiri. Now that's an interesting choice, I tell you what. He's always sucking up to the purples, trying to make himself all cool and knowledgeable about law stuff. So you'd think he'd be clean, but maybe, just maybe, it's all a front. I'm working on a video about rebel sympathizers right now, and that's one of the big, bold points I could look over. How sometimes the guy trying too hard to look like he's at the level is actually as far off level as he gets. So yeah, let's see what this guy's hiding, why don't we? Moseying over to his door, you consider the keypad. This shouldn't be a hard password to guess. It's gotta be the same one of his favorite animes, right? You punch one in and nope, buzzer sounds. Try another, nada, but your delight. The door clicks and begins to slide open after the third anime title. You glance over your shoulder and see Tirana beaming at you from right behind you. Then turn your back to the door and yikes. A katana comes swinging out towards you on a wire and you narrowly dive out of the way before it connects, crashing to the floor in the process. You groan and stagger back to your feet and hear a familiar voice sounding from the speaker in Tagiri's room. Oh gosh. Foolish evildoer. Do you really think I would be that simple? You've fallen for my trap. Your pitiful guesses were all it took to seal your doom. Not that it's going to do you any good while you bleed out on the floor. Sayonara, trespasser. The message seems to cut off from there, but then there's some muffled sounds like a microphone being moved. <laughs> what do you think, Tadashi? It's going to look cool when I show it to my colleagues? You breathe in a sigh of relief. The katana was aimed right at your head. You almost got skewered. Talk about a close one, right, Tirona? Tirona? Oh, she dead. We killed Tirona. Okay. Good thing they didn't show the small child getting skewered by a sword. Okay. Let us try a Tagora. Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. He has, he's real smart and a good talker. He's always got the latest gossip, so you'd think he'd be the kind, my kind of guy. But he's also such a sleaze, like a real creepy creepster. Not, gonna me not to mention he charges out the sniff tube for all his info. No thanks, I'll handle it myself. But oh, imagine the scandals if he's turned out to be a rebel all along. I really hope we find something on him. <laughs> After some 1337 hacking, ah, leet. <laughs> that is punching his ringling day into the keypad. The door into his office clicks open. The two of you slip inside and you glance around. You are immediately reminded of his hive. Almost eerily reminded of, in fact. Did, did he just order copies of all the same minimalist aesthetic furniture and just had them sent to his office? That's... Well, you don't know exactly what that is, but it's certainly impressive. Hmm, you know I'm not sure if that vase is regulation. Take a picture of it just in case, will you? Sure thing. And if you happen to accidentally delete the picture later, well... Actually, you have accidentally, accidentally deleted a bunch of pictures before. Figuring out your troll phone has been an ordeal. You line up your camera and take a shot and... Uh-oh. As you were about to press the button, your phone received an incoming call from someone, and you ended up hitting the answer call button instead. Now you're about to be trapped in a socially, social encounter that you weren't mentally prepared for. No! Oh, wait, it's Tagore. <laughs> Better call Gorgor. <laughs> oh my gosh. I like his thumbnail, though. <laughs> Little call. 
That's no problem at all. He's gregarious and easy to talk to, and you're standing in his office. Aw, oh, not again. Throwing on your most practiced everything is perfectly fine expression. You try to angle the camera so he can't tell where you are. My apologies on bothering you on such short notice. I recently learned through the grapevine that you may have been responsible for Zigsy's attitude as of late. I thought I, it might be prudent to let you know that. Wait. Is that... My office? Did you break into my office? Uh, no! It's not his office, it just, um, is an office that coincidentally happens to look exactly like his. His face has been frozen in mid-smile, and now it slowly seems to twist until the smile doesn't look nearly as friendly or genuine as it did a moment ago. He starts to laugh, a little raspy, chuckles under his breath. I see. I see. More the fool I was to ever believe I could trust a fellow liar. Is this Gallic? Cause no, is this Galax? Galax work? No, no, it can't be. He doesn't do that sort of subterfuge. It was all just a game for you. Yes, that must be it. Of course, it was. You're not here to make friends. What? No, that's exactly what you're here to do. The bills I so graciously for went for your sake. <laughs> well, no matter. You can expect a very hefty invoice to arrive via email as soon as I finish typing it up. No, please no. It doesn't have to end this way. You were just trying to secure another friendship. He knows how it goes, right? Saying or doing anything for a bit of social gain? Ah, uh, but of course. And I would be happy to continue our business relationship in the future. Once we've been reimbur I've been reimbursed in full for my time in expedientias. Farewell. He ends the call and his face disappears. The friendly little beep-whoop sound that Gripe makes cannot possibly underscore the finality and tragedy of the situation. Your heart truly is broken. But hey, at least you can trade one friend for another, right? Now that she's seen what you're willing to sacrifice for her, surely Tirona will... Tirona? Ah, oh, crap. At some point while you were distracted, she made a break for it. Now you're left with naught but a hefty fine and an ache in your chest where friendship used to be. Game over, man. Game over. Okay. I didn't want to sell her out, but it looks like I'm selling her out. <sighs> Tizius. You've got- it's gotta be Tizius. She runs a tight, if sleep-deprived, ship. You'll give it a good try. Fail to find anything useful, and Tirona will appreciate your attempt. Tizius, huh? Yeah, she's got uh, that vibe to her, you know? She talks a lot about improving the justice system. And what kind of person does that, huh? A rebel sympathizer. That's who. The Alternian justice system has worked just fine for hundreds of sweeps. The only person who ought to be proposing changes is Triza herself. But obviously, there's nothing to change, and she'd, be, and she'd have done it already. Anyway, this is Trizzy's door right over here. <laughs> no, Tizzy's door over here. So what do you say? Why don't you start working your magic? The I an idea comes to you, you start tapping away at your phone, much to Tarona's chagrin. Uh... Hey, buddy, we're trying to break into someone's office. This is no time to play flappy talent scratcher. <laughs> you explain to her that you're looking up Tizia's on your phone to consolidate information and improve your chance of guessing her password. Whoopsie. Sorry, I'm just a little antsy here, I guess. Ha ha ha. Carry on! Turning to the keypad, you start inputting your guesses. You try the birthday list on Tizia's chitter profile. Nope. Even the name of her mate spread doesn't work. Then something clicks. Everyone expects a long, complex password, right? You try the two paltry digits instead. 69. <gasps> Click. The light goes green and the door of the office slides open. Bingo. Oh my gosh. She really is part of the sign list stuff. Okay. That is a good password, though. Her office is kind of... looks the same, only slightly more purple. Feeling pretty chipper about your breaking and entering skills, you usher Tarona inside with an exaggerated bow. She cackles and skips right in, making her way over to the hus top, sitting on, t uh, on Tizia's crowded desk. She's got so many cups. 
There are papers and old mugs lying around everywhere, and the rest of the room is as disorganized as the desk, with towering stacks of books threatening to collapse if you so much as breathe wrong. The Empire already monitors online communications, of course, but we've got tools for those sneaky sneaks who try to hide things off the cloud. Geronia produces a small device, bright red with gold accents, and plugs it into what appears to be a USB slot on the husk top. It wriggles upsettingly. I'll go through her files where you start looking through all those books and folders, okay? You offer a thumbs up and turn your attention to the absolutely massive pile of literature that is strewn throughout the office. You're not really giving it your full effort, hesitant to pry into Tizia's stuff, but you get the sense that she isn't hiding anything here anyway. Behind you, Tarona is clicking through folders on the husk top, the exasperation in her voice steadily growing. Useless school feeding assignments. Copies of court transcripts. A bunch of nudes. Just all normal teal stuff. There's nothing incriminating out here at all. Where is she hiding it? Nope. Tarona pulls away from the husk top and dives into the stack of books with gusto of a small child in a ball pit, rifling through pages as quickly as she can. It isn't too long before she gives up in pursuit, too, uh, emerging from the pile in a shower of loose pages. Ugh, I can't find any evidence of wrongdoings anywhere. No hidden folders on her husk top. No se secret stash between the pages of a book. Nothing! She stomps back and forth, pacing around the room and scratching her face absentmindedly. Maybe there isn't anything to find. Is that so bad? Yeah, if she's not bad, it's super bad. Ugh, look, see? I'm not big. I'm not strong. I'm not... Not even if I get a growth spurt when I'm older, it won't change that I don't like to fight. That's not what I'm cut out to do. I'm a thinker and a listener and a talker. Knowledge is power, and the only kind of power I'm good with. It's the only kind that'll keep me in the game. Everyone's got to play nice and get. Is gonna. Is gotta play nice and get on my case because they know I've always got the dirt. But all those shifty, crafty tail jerks keep trying to hide all their secrets from me. I'm gonna be hooped if I get... I'm gonna be hooped if I can't get one over on them. Tarona yanks at her pigtails and slumps over against the wall, looking as frazzled as ever you've seen... Looking as frazzled as ever you've seen her. This calls for pep talk. You sit down from across from her and offer a gentle smile. You know where she's coming from. When you came here, you were a mess. You still kind of are. All you had was your guts, your mind, and your goofy charisma. You've been blundering your way across the planet, but somehow in between all the blundering, you've made friends. You gained skills. You figured out how to keep surviving, even when it seemed impossible. And if you can do it, she can too. Sure, she may not be as big and strong as she'd like. She won't always win. Sometimes there's going to be days like today where she doesn't succeed. But she's got it, this spark in her. You can see it. And that tells you that she'll just be fine as long as she keeps her head up and tries to hang in there. Tarona perks right up. Your motivations, motivational speech game is really on the ball lately. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. This might have been a bust. But I sure ain't. I've already got all kinds of connections and pals and skills. I mean, the guy I run those errands for... He says I'm one of the smartest and cleverest teals he's ever met, and that really, and that I'm really mature for my age. And hi, what up? <laughs> okay, you'd never find out what else he says because you're interrupted in the sci-fi whoosh at the office door opening. Is a, a Tizius steps through. There's a long, awkward pause before she realize, rise, raises an eyebrow at Tarona. Now, just what in the hell are you two doing in my office? Tarona begins stammering a response, but Tizius jerks her head towards the door. Yeah, I'm gonna need you to get out. Right now. She turns to you. Not you. You. We need to have a chat. Tarona flashes you a terrified look before she's scurrying out the room, door sliding shut behind her. Hi. Anything about real plans? Tizius glances at the door, then pulls towards the most secluded corner of the room, where books are piled so high they practically reach the ceiling. 
She speaks in a low, hushed whisper. A good idea, because you bet a troll buck or two that Tyrone is listening outside the door. Hey, so... That was some good thinking, texting me as soon as you got your palm husk back. You shrug humbly. You're getting good at leveraging your bountiful stockade of friends. I wonder what she thinks I'm going to do to you. There's a lot of rumors about me. Most of them untrue. But when you look as tired as I do every day, the trolls whisper. <laughs> she chuckles lightly and takes a sip of water before sighing. I can't believe she thought I'd be dumb enough to keep incriminating documents in my office. She must be getting real desperate to prove herself. This is exactly my point about how messed up it is here. Everyone's trying to climb over each other out of the muck and pull the rest down like shell scuttlers at a seafood storage device. Poor girl. She thinks she's got every one in the palm of her hand. But she's played as much as any of the rest of the sh uh, schmucks. Another sigh. You feel like sighing might as well be Tizius' second quirk. But you've already heard enough from me about that. So pretend I chewed you that chewed you out or something. I need to reorganize all the stuff now that she ruined my old system. Her office looked far better organized than it did when you walked in. Actually, but you're not about to split hairs over it when Tizius just bailed you out of a potential disaster. You thank her and give her a quick hug and then slip out of the office. Tirona nearly falls over herself, s falls over herself, scump scrant, stumbling away from the door where she's clearly trying to listen in. Whoa, you are, you're here and you're alive and in one piece. One piece? Did someone say one piece? That must have been a real close one. You know what she does to people who cross her, right? Well, I'll give you a hint, pal. It starts with disembowelment and only gets worse from there. <laughs> uh-huh. How'd you make it out? Oh, you know. Talking your way out of a jam. It's a total breeze. Tarona seems starry-eyed and impressed. You sure know how to handle yourself. Especially for a weird alien. I think you and I ought to stick together. Technically, you don't owe me anything anymore, but it's the little people work best in numbers, yeah? You could use a friend like me. You smile, basking in the now familiar glow of camaraderie. Yeah, you could use a friend like her. And you think she could use a friend like you, too. You did good. Did it? Bing. Yay! <laughs> I think there was only- was there only one choice in that entire thing? I don't know. I've screwed up multiple times though, so that's what matters. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys all in the next episode of Friend Sim. Bye! Hey there. Consider becoming a patron, just like the phenomenal Gerald Thomas, Bleed Red, and Alexander Madeline.